Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Um, so, tonight we are going to be playing um, a role-playing game that I wrote. We're on um, the second session of um, the Cybercrow setting. And we are going to see where we get on that. If it is your first time joining the stream, I will explain to you a little bit. Be Like a Crow is a game that I created. Um, I kickstarted it last year. Um, it's currently on its second printing. Um, so we've just got uh, copies of it back in the store again. Uh, you can get it on the P in PDF and you can also buy physical copies of it. We've also got lovely journals and lovely decks of cards to go with it. Um, as well as pin badges, but I am going to be giving away, not only am I going to be giving away the um, game to one lucky viewer tonight, but I'm also going to be giving away a pin badge. So there we go. Fabulous. Right, so um, there's not much else for me to say hi pastor hi jack wamper thank you for joining us i would say that if you have already have a copy of be like a crow um and you do win this then give it to a friend okay we'll still send it to you give it to a friend um try and get someone else into this um into this game i've also seen a few um i've seen a few people playing it online now which is quite exciting it was um there's a um there was a 48 hour charity stream where it was um played oh thank you jack that's that's good to hear yeah excellent yeah um it's um yeah i've seen it on a charity stream i've seen a couple of youtubers do it um and of course myself so you know share your stories there is actually a reddit i think i mentioned it in the early streams i haven't mentioned it for a while there is a reddit it's nothing to do with me it's an unofficial reddit but um it's it's very friendly on there and i do pop my head in every now and then and answer a few questions or post something about the stream but people do share their stories on there or um they ask any questions they might have about the game so you know and feel free to ask them during the stream as well because that's what i am here for um i'm here to help people understand the game um you know it does have rules but i always say as well it is basically a tool for inspiring creativity so if you want to ever drop the rules drop the rules and and keep on writing so Let's see where we got to last week. I'm just going to... So we we previously, the previous six or seven sessions from when we first started, we played a Gothic Crow. We're currently playing a Cyber Crow. This is only the second episode. Last week at the end of the session, we... Um, hi, I'm a T-Rex. Thanks for joining. Um, at the end of last session, which was our first um, Cyber Crow session... I think we'd completed our first two objectives, which mean which means that I was able to um, upgrade GX thirty seven from a um, juvenile to a fledgling, which means we got a couple of things. We also I'm just going to quickly take a look at my notion document there. So <coughs> we managed to um, fix a virus, which was pretty cool. Um, we got a neural obfuscator from a hacker's basement and delivered it to a service hatch in a hotel. Um, and also a retired IT guy who we, I, I kind of put into the story was the hacker had stolen some of our secrets on a data card. Um, again, they was, they were in this, um, they were in a subterranean nightclub in the basement. So we managed to get both of those things without getting ourselves into a big fight. Um, I did get injured, but I managed to heal some of those injuries on the way. We picked up a fake digital ID and, and electromagnetic pulsar now i'm going to actually delete these um objectives because we don't actually have any objectives at the moment and i think we were heading back but what one of the things you can do when you upgrade um when you level up so to speak is you can generate an objective alternatively and that's just in in case you don't have any left um you can collect as many as objectives as you like in this game um so let's um Let's get in. Hi, hi and lonesome. Thank you for joining. Um, I was I was just going to say at the start of this stream, um, not only am I going to give away a copy of Be Like a Crow, it, would, it will be the second printing of it that we're giving away. Um, so it's got a few um, few typo fixes and things, but I'm also, um, we're also going to throw this, that's the right way up, this lovely Be Like a Crow pin badge. I'm aware if you have backed the game, you probably got it, but like I said before, just just give it to someone. Um, share, the, share the crow love. All right, I'm going to give my deck a shuffle. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's give the deck a shuffle and get started. 
I'm also going to be launching on Kickstarter. Uh, I'm not doing it on Kickstarter because Kickstarter have got rules and regulations. Until you've done four Kickstarters, you are not allowed to run um, a ki another Kickstarter until you've fulfilled. So I have just done a, a, a Kickstarter for some dice, which will be fulfilled in October or November. And so unfortunately, until I've done another two, I can't do a another Kickstarter, which is kind of weird because now I'm at that point where everything is being produced and I'm kind of sat around just, you know, I'm, uh, well, I'm not sat around, I'm working on my next game. So while I'm shuffling these, I'm going to tell you about my next game and I'm going to try it out on Indiegogo, um, just, just for a bit of difference. I'm probably going to launch that in um, September, yeah, early September, so maybe in the next couple of weeks. It's called Death Valley. And it's basically a, a it's a it's an RPG, it's a multiplayer RPG, where it has a Western, slightly horrorish setting, um, but but mild horror or or as as far as you want to take the horror. But the twist is that um, a you are a um, you are actually the undead, so what you're trying to do is protect your frontiers town from expansion by the um, living. Um, I'll get to your question in a second, Pastor, about Crothulu. Um so you have to, yeah, you have to protect your town from the living. Um, and I'm also going to, we've got a few little extra goodies for stretch goals on that one. Um, so we're just, we're testing Indiegogo um, out just, just as something to do because I'm constantly writing games and um, it's just, if I can get the funding in to write them, then it helps me keep doing it. Um yeah, so that game will be a, a D6 pool game. But but one thing that it will have, because it was um, the light version of it was launched with the Kickstarter we did with tarot cards, um, it will actually use tarot, a, de a deck of tarot cards. And what you can do is um, every it works with scenes. So you play out scenes. There is a, There is a sheriff who runs the game, but you play out scenes and... You at the start of every scene, you all take a tarot card, and that tarot card gives you a loose prompt, and you have to try and fit that into the scene to get the equivalent of inspiration. So it might tell you that um, um, a stranger from your past has just wandered into town, and then you can actually say, "Well, I want to play that scene out as another scene," or you can. It might be something that you want to do in that scene. So it's yeah, it's kind of GMless. Yeah, I mean, there has to be. I've I've. I guess there has to be something to steer it. I haven't fully nailed down the rules on how I make it completely GMless, but yeah, I I do want to make it GMless, and that was the in initial pitch. I love trying new things in games. I love collaborative storytelling, and um, yeah, so that that's going to be called Death Valley. Um, I did release some imagery and things to the to my Patreon um, people. Thank you, um, if any of you are here. Um, so I I tend to put beta stuff out. To them, right. Going back to Crowthulu, so we are playing the cyber cyber crow um, version of Be Like a Crow at the moment. I have just put the finishing touches to Crowthulu, so hopefully next week I will send the PDFs out. I have to get it copy edited, um, so that takes a couple of days turnaround. I send it off to my copy editor, and they're they're pretty quick. And then there will actually be a print version as well that hopefully we'll be taking to Essen in Germany along with uh, Be Like a Crow. What else am I working on? Um, I am working on a Be Like a Crow multiplayer, but that will not be probably kickstarted until the end of the year. And then finally, I've got a new little solo RPG that I have got on the back burner at the moment, but it's um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a map building solo RPG. Uh, it's called Doomsday, and it's where you play a family and you are trying to survive after uh, during the well after the apocalypse has happened. So um, yeah, so I do yeah I love doing this. I'm very fortunate that I I work with my wife. She helps me run the dice side of the business. So she um, I started off with the dice side of the business. That's allowed me to do all these amazing things. Um, so I do feel very privileged that I can do it. And if you do want to support me, all you have to do is buy one of my games or. Um, go on, go on the website and buy, buy some dice. Um, I would always suggest buying the games though because they're a lot of fun. All right, so should we get started? Um, we'll we've I've up, I've upgraded. I keep saying upgraded. It's actually I've leveled up, but I mean I'm calling it upgraded because we're playing Cybercrow and that seems more fitting. 
So um, I now have a mechanical wing and a bionic eye. So I can just quickly take a look in um, my my book. I am a. Um, I believe I played a. Let's have a look. Yeah, here we go. It's in the settings. So Cybercrow. I wrote the rules and I still have to look, I still have to look them up. Um, so we're currently a juvenile, so a mechanical wing. So we added a tick to fly, dive bomb and evade, and we've got a bionic eye. So it's just, um, they do give us actual mathematical advantages, but what they also do is they're cool for, for, for you know, the role playing, the storytelling part of it as well. We, we just need to remember we've got a mechanical wing and a bionic eye, which is why I've only made reference to them there because i don't really really need to um i don't really need to remember everything because it's all recorded on my stats at this moment in time so we are heading back to um our base i never thought of a name for the crew that i currently work for i've just started working for them they took me in young um i we are data thieves so we are always on the lookout to steal some data and um, as well as steal the data, we're always on the lookout to sell that data on. But that means we've also attracted a few enemies. Uh, we, you know, we we have a rival gang, um, a rival crew near to us. We've um, that was one of my first jobs actually, um, um, to actually put an obfuscator in the. We have a um, a device in there that steals some of their data, um, and we thought they were onto it. So my first job as a fledgling was to go fly over to. Um, the nightclub, I believe. Yeah, they were above a nightclub. We flew over to the nightclub, and um, I installed a device um in the nightclub. So there we go. Right, let's let's see what our first objective is going to be. So I have actually shuffled the cards. So the first thing you do, this game works with prompts. Um, the prompts are all specific to whatever setting you're using. There are six settings. Um, I did Gothic previously. I'm doing Cybercrow. I will at the end of this one. I tend to have sessions running about six. You know, I I do about six ninety minute sessions. You can you can, depending on how you do this, they can last a lot longer. Um, obviously, if I was writing this down, it might take longer. I might be stopping and thinking about things, but I'm just trying to keep things going. Um, and I'm just that I'm recording it, so there's no point in me writing anything down because I can just come back and watch the videos. Right. So the first thing I have drawn is an ace of spades. So in the book we go to our um our prompts, which I have got all these tabs in the top of the book. So we draw we're gonna create an objective for Cybercrow. So the ace of spades is create your own objective or draw again. Well I'm gonna draw again. I'm feeling a bit tired today, so my brain isn't working as fast as it normally does. Um so five of diamonds. Um you have discovered oh, so somebody has discovered our secret base. We need to move on fast. You've heard that location might be a good place to set up a new headquarters. So take an object with you and don't let it fall into the wrong cause. So we think that a rival crew, um, a, someone from a rival crew has discovered our base of operations, which is actually in, um, you can't see it on the map. I'll move the map down a, a little bit. Um, so yeah, our base of operations is in the Skytrain Terminus. Um, it's a bit of a run-down terminus. It's in a, an area called the Waste, which is outside of the city. Um, we have heard that um, someone has discovered where our secret base is, so we need to move on fast. So um, one of my elders has told me that we have to head to a location that's a good place to set up again, and I need to take an object. They've tasked me with taking an object. So we've got a few things to do here. We've got a few prompts. So firstly, we need to um, figure out which character has discovered our secret base. Uh, so we draw another We draw another card. So let's draw another card. So five of hearts. So we have a prompt for characters. So let me just have a look in here. So the five of hearts. Um, Okay, that actually says a smart vacuum. I'm I'm going to run with that. So uh, a smart vacuum. So what I will say is everything in this world, um, even if it looks innocuous, can be, um, you know, it it can be against you. So a um, a smart vacuum. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's a, like a street cleaning, a robotic street cleaning device that for 
the longest time we just thought was just doing its duties, coming around the street cleaning it. It has actually been infiltrated by a rival crew. Um, they've put like cameras on it. Um, they've also put data sensors on it. They've been searching for our Wi-Fi and they have picked us up. So we believe that they have found us. So a, um, a let's write this down. So a hijacked um, street cleaning vehicle. Uh, let me write this in a slightly different way. Arrival crew. Arrival crew has found us by hijacking a street cleaning vehicle. Um, we need to move. We need to relocate HQ to. So the next thing is we need to know where we're relocating our HQ to. So I'm going to draw another card. Seven of Hearts. So Seven of Hearts is a data center. Okay. Okay, well, that kind of makes sense. So we have to find a... Uh, we've we've been thinking about moving to this data center. It's quite, it's quite an audacious thing to do because there's, uh, there is a privately owned data center and we know that if we can... Um, f if we can actually get get in there stealthily we can install our equipment we can piggyback on their stuff and it will also it will up our game a bit because you know this data set this data center has got a lot of um it's got a lot of equipment it's got a lot of um juice when it comes to um, data transmission um and a lot of the data goes through this center so it's it's going to be a risky business getting to that data center and getting ourselves installed but let's do it <coughs> i'll see where that is in a moment on the map uh, in fact, we could look for that now. So the data center is, well, there's a server farm not far away, and it's not too far away from where we are. Or we could say it's in M3G Corp HQ. Yeah, so in, let's do um, let's do that. That's quite exciting. Let's go and try and install ourselves in a corporation, literally in the lion's den. Um, or figuratively, sorry, in the lion's den. Um, right, okay. In a data center belonging to what's the name of that corporation game m3g i mean these maps come with the game but you can create your own maps um so we could call this company anything we wanted but it's going to be the m3g belonging to m3g corp so m3g corp are one of the biggest data providers in this world um they're they're intrinsically linked to the government um so far embedded in the government that m3g have pretty much got a say in how things are run in the city um, so the final thing we need to do is we, we need to figure out what object my crew has tasked me with taking. Um, the issue is this is I'm going to have to drop something because I can only carry two objects at a time. So there's going to be a cost for this, but I cannot refuse to do what my crew has asked to do. So the object is, let's just take a look on the prompt. It's a red suit. It's the Queen of Diamonds, a wireless transmitter, which allows... Um, us to communicate secretly with other creatures. Okay, so um, my crew want... So we're all taking flight. Take a wireless transmitter with me. So I uh, thank you, Susie Ann. I, I created all the maps in... Um... Oh, hey, hey, Unite the Realm. I know who you are. Thank you for joining <laughs> Um, yeah, I created all the maps in Incarnate. Um, some of them were d done, but some of the bits were done by artists, like the actual backgrounds of the maps, and then I added, I added everything on. But um, the majority of the maps are this. I just I use um, a commercial version of Incarnate. Um, so let's let's see what we're going to do with this. Then, so what's going to happen is all of the um, all of the crows and rooks etc that are in my crew they're all going to fly off in separate ways because we obviously we're not going to fly off together because we don't want to alert attention to ourselves there's a lot of rival um, bird gangs in this area that are working on stealing data and selling that data so we're going to take our wireless transmitter we're going to head i'm going to take this i'm going to wait a little while till um, a 
few of the others have gone and it, I'm, I'm told it's my turn to take flight. And then we're going to um, get this wireless transmitter. Now, this is a wireless transmitter upgrade, but I'm going to say that I can't use it because it's not it's not been um, installed in me. It does actually allow me to make signal checks with authority, but I'm going to rule that I can't do that because I'm going to be carrying it, um, which is a little bit annoying. But um, yeah, let's let's um, let's just make a note of that. Making the t I've already put that down. My crew want me to take a wireless transmitter, so we're going to take flight. So this is where we start um, we start traversing through the map. So once we've got an objective, we can start moving towards where we want to go. The rules are quite simple. Every time we move one hex, if we're in flight, we have to draw one event and respond to that event. So that would be, um, it's a prompt in here. Um, the, the events are generic. They're not specific to any setting, but there are placeholders in them that make them specific. You'll see how that works in a moment. So I have got to generate one event before I can move to the next hex if I'm flying. If I land for any reason, I have to take two events before I can take flight again uh, and, and leave the leave the hex I'm in. So the rules are quite simple. When you're traveling by flying, you only have to take one event per hex. Um, when you're on land, you have to take two events before you can either go, get to the next hex or take flight. All right, so let's get ourselves somewhere on the map. We need to start heading in a northeasterly direction. So I guess we could head through the city. Um, I always take into account as well, because this is like collaborative, um, create, uh, sorry, this is like, um, creative writing with rules. I always take into account everything that's happening. So when I travel across the map, I think about the places that I am, how they might, you know, relate to what I'm doing. So there's a kind of confluence of things that can steer the story. I tried to create this with a lot of replayability. That's hence all the settings, all the different crows, free choices about how you, um, design your crow. So let's let's start taking turns anyway. Uh, so the first thing I need to do, I have marked off events now here. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, go back to our events. We're going to draw an event. I'm going to. I am actually going to move outwards and away from where I am now because I'm going to start moving backwards. I didn't actually get back to base either. So what I'm going to say is that I I saw one of my um, companions or one of my co-workers my co-crows um heading towards me who'd been sent out to find me and and tasked me with taking this wireless transmitter all right let's go and make some movement so we're going to move one hex we're going to move across um am i going to move across the nightclub i've just been there and i i'm going to move down outside the city walls for now because i do feel like I don't want to go near the nightclub again because I've just been there and, and you know, it it might be quite hot there at the moment for me to, you know, to be seen. Um, I'm pretty com confident I got in and out of there without anyone knowing who I was. I had a false ID with me. Um, we do need to actually add as well. We need to take something away. So I'm going to take my EMP away. I'm going to keep my... I'm going to keep my fake digital ID and I'm going to add a wireless transmitter to my inventory so i can only carry two items uh, maybe if i put a little dash there that will help denote where a new item starts okay so i think that's all good let's um i can bring that down a bit sorry uh yeah well my so my bionic eye i can um so my bionic eye basically it it adds it, it gives me mathematical advantages, um, so it gives me physical stats, but um, it's also there for flavor. So it does give me like um, I, I get advantage not advantages, but I get um, extra points on my search um, that I can add when I'm making a search to so my search checks um, and some other stuff. Uh, but the the thing is with it, it's so I don't really need to think about having it or remember having it because it's already recorded on my sheet. But it's good to have a note of it because then, you know, I can um, I can add some flavor to the story that I'm using my bionic eye. Um, so let's draw an event. I think we drew, we just drew four diamonds, right? So um, this is an event in the air. So I'm flying. 
Uh, you meet a magpie who tells you where you can find an object. In the next hex you visit, you can land and pick it up. You must take two further turns on land. So I come across a magpie while I'm in flight. It joins me for a while. It is part of my crew, uh, which kind of makes sense. And it's going to tell, it's going to give me um, an object. So let's, it's going to tell me where there's an object. So let's see what that object is. Um, that object is another fake digital ID. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. It's a holographic magpie projector, a tiny projector that can be used during combat to create a virtual magpie that will distract your enemy. Right, okay, that kind of makes sense because there is actually... Um, let's have a look. We did actually find something like this before, and that is up... Um, oh, no, we didn't. No, that's fine. I did... I got told about it. Right, okay, so in the next... Um, do I want this? A magpie projector. A tiny projector can be used during combat to create a virtual magpie that will distract your enemy. Uh, I feel like I'm playing this game again like I played the last one. I'm trying to be more um, more charismatic than I am combat -y. Uh So, yeah, I'm, I think... I'm going to stay away from this device. I'm going to I'm going to take another I'm just going to fly because I do want to get up to M3 Corp. I'm going to come a, I'm going to come over the city wall. Um, I'm going to fly so I'm going to try and skirt the city. Um or maybe I could go over the bank and over the server farm because that's going to be the most direct route. Let's draw another event. So, 6 of clubs. So the um next event is um you are hungry. Land and make a search check for food. On a failure, you find a few morsels, but not enough to f fully sustain your energy. Take one injury. You must also take your next two turns on land. All right, so I'm going to land. So this is my first check. So the way ch checks work in this game is that the first thing you do is you draw a card, which gives you your target. And then the second thing you do is you draw your check um, card. So that, that gives you your value plus anything you've got for that specific check. So we have to make a search check. So I'm going to land on the city wall. Um, there are there there's various insects and things up here. There are probably other birds' nests, but um, uh, it is a fact that crows do steal um eggs. But I'm gonna stick to the insects um to keep this um PG rated. I'm not gonna be stealing eggs. Uh, so let's see. So my I have to beat a ten. So my search is my my search check is actually two. So I have to get eight or more on this draw. So I get a three, which means I fail. So I um I take one injury. So injuries are um they're not just physical injuries. They're also like part of your constitution as well. They you know they're a culmination of things. They're basically look your ability to keep going. So I'm gonna have one of six injuries now. Um, and they do, they can stack up pretty quickly, these, so you, there is a bit of um, strategy involved. Now I have to take um, two turns, so what I gen tend to do when I land and I search, that's one turn, so I'm going to have to take another turn on land now, so we're going to draw an event on land, seven of spades, um, which yields... The Seven of Spares yield. You find a message scratched into the dirt by another of your species who needs help. You can generate a new objective. Okay, so I have landed on the wall, but I also find a... Yeah, I find a message scratched by one of my crew. Um, it looks like they didn't make it. Um, they have, unfortunately... I don't know what they've done, whether they've been electrocuted, whether they've been caught by someone injured in a fight but um, their body is actually here. So what I might do is an impromptu um, funeral as well for them. I think that's only fair. So I can do a check for, I need to get a six. Um, so you can you can um, rule your own kind of actions as well in this. Um, so I'm going to, this would be now actually my second, probably me taking my second event here anyway. So I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a sing check to just um, give them the proper send off. I get a queen. Which means my fun my um, funeral for them succeeds. Um, I do my duty as a, a COVID and I give a proper ceremony. Um, I would also say that because of the way that I sing, a couple more COVIDs do come and join me. Um, which is normal for a crow funeral. There would be more of us. And then we manage to um, just cover the body. 
um, and sort of drag it behind a sign or something so it's not out. Give give it the sort of burial it should have as a crow. Um, right. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to see what this message is. Well, it's actually an objective, so we get to draw an objective, which is cool because the more the merrier with objectives. It means that we can. We have to currently get um, four. I'm just going to move this microphone a little bit because it's right in the way of my book. So we have to get four objectives now to move up to the next level. We had to get, so when we were um, fledgling, we had to get two to move up to a juvenile. Now to go from juvenile to adult, we have to get four. And then finally from adult to old crow, we have to get six. And then old crow is just a free for all. You can just carry on telling your story as long as you want. Um, let's draw an objective. Nine of diamonds. Two corporate adversaries have asked you to spy on each other. Okay, so this is this is interesting. So I have been handed, I have had to take on the, um, as is normal in crews, if one of the crew falls, someone has to take on the task they were given. So two cooperative adversaries have been have asked us to spy. One manufactures an object, the other manufactures object. Who do we help? So I can now decide who I want to help. So we'll say it's the M3 G Corp who we're going to and the Bionic Factory. So let's um let's take a look and see what they manuf let's look take a look at what the two objects objects. Let me just double check that prompt. And to add you to spy on each other. So let me see who I'm gonna spy on. Because I'll just say that there was no instruction on who I should spy on. It was a it was a brand new um job we'd got. So we'd actually got two jobs from two different people. Um so one of them um manufactures digital key rings that are used to um basically lock doors. Um so they're supposed to be the most secure ones that they are. I guess what the other company wants is they want to know the passcodes for these locks so they can... So I would say this is M3G Corp wants to know um, how these locks work in the Bionic Factory. Um, that's interesting. I don't know why the Bionic Factory would be making these, but... Or maybe we do it the other way around. Yeah, okay. So the Bionic Factory wants to know how the passcodes work at M3G Corp because basically they think that M3G Corp are also trying to muscle in on their business and create their own bionic um, augmentations. Um, so we could spy for the smaller company, which is the Bionic Factory. But what does M3G Corp want us to spy on for the other company? Um, oh, they have a... They want us to try and get a chip containing corporate secrets. Okay, from the Bionic Factory. Well, I think naturally, because we are heading for, we are actually heading for M3G Corp's headquarters, I think I'll take the job. I could even become a double agent, but I think I will take the job initially for um, the Bionic Factory. I am going to try and find out the passcode to um, the area where they do their um, cybernetics in M3G Corp. So let's put that down. Um, so this is actually a real job now. This isn't just me doing something for my uh, my an in internal business for the crew. This is actually um, my first proper external job I've been given. All right, that's cool. So I have to find out the passcode for the daughter the um cybernetics cybernetics division of m three g corp for our client uh what shall we call what shall we call our bionics company does anybody want to throw a name in the chat um while i take a drink we so we want to we want a cool blade runner a um cyberpunk name for our um for the for our new client wingtronic all right thank you jack wingtronic's cool okay wingtronic that's great okay so yeah that's our um 
that's our latest job. Let me just pull that down. Um, just to remind you, um, my crow last my gothic crow is called Eddie. This crow is called Jax three seven. Um, so let's let's have a go. What do we do now? We can take off and fly. We've got another. So we're going to take off from the wall after having performed a funeral and um, taking on our first um, actual bit of work that's going to make the um, our crew some money. And we can do it all in the same place because we're heading to M3G Corp. We're going to try getting somewhere maybe on the top of their skyscraper or maybe um, in the parking lot underneath it. We're going to try and get in there um, and hook up to their um, data system and then we're going to piggyback. So not only are we going to steal secrets, we're going to use our, our piggyback technology to get into the Feathernet and send our data backwards and forwards because we, we run on a network called the Feathernet. Um, right, okay. Let's take flight then. So let's head up towards... We're going to head over this server farm. We might see something cool as we head that way. So let's head past there. So we're going to take another event in in flight. Now that's cool. So Queen of Spades, so an eagle offers you a lift on their tail feathers. You grab them in your beak and travel two hexes before you need to take your next turn. That's amazing. So um, uh, on top of the server farm is perched this mighty eagle um, called Claudius. And Claudius, um, Claudius knows our crew, tries not... Um, Tries not to get involved with these kind of things, but, um, you know, sees that I am struggling a little bit. There's, um, it's quite, there's a lot of wind up here at this height buffeting me about. I am still only a juvenile, so I am going to, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to, just give me a second, I'm going to make the text box, uh, box a wee bit smaller so we can see all the messages coming through on there. Yeah, Claudius, exactly. Or Telonius. <laughs> Cool. All right. Just let me make this a little bit better so we can see more messages. Okay. So Claudius is um, Claudius is going to help me move too. So this is really good because this is going to um, shift me over the server farm, one and two. So I'm now heading for the bank. I mean, I suppose we could stop in at the bank and try and um, divert some cash. But let's... Um, Let's take another event in flight. So it's quite good. We've only landed one, so we are moving on. So Ace of Diamonds, um, create your own event. Or Well, I'm not going to create any of my own events in this session. So if I was playing this game um, off screen and I may, you know, maybe I, I only do these streams for 90 minutes, I would possibly sit and think for a little while about what kind of event or something that might make sense if I'm near a server farm or a bank, I mean near a server farm, it could be something like um, the Wi-Fi or the signal start interfering with my chips in my brain, because I have a couple of augmentations, um, you know, and I could take a, I might take a navigate check, otherwise get a lot, in fact, let's actually, let's do that, let's make a navigate check, let's, let's create our own event in here, let's do it, because I just, I said I wasn't going to do one, and then I've just created one, so let's say that the Wi-Fi signals from this server farm mess with my um, brain. So I'm going to have to make a navigate check. So I'm going to use, oh, Jack, that's quite high. So what I rule is when you get lost, you, you can't go forward. You have to go left or right. So let's have a little look, uh, see if I do have anything. I don't have anything that helps me navigate. I have a wireless transmitter. Yeah, I don't have anything that helps me navigate. So um, let's Let's see. I need to get... What have I got for Navigate? Have I got anything? I've got two. So I need to get nine or more. I got a Joker. So I'm going to keep the Joker to one side. So there's two... Th so J Joker's a wild card. They do quite a few things in this game. I could play it now to succeed. Or I could save it for later. And I could chance um, taking another card. I think I'll chance taking another card. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten. I only just don't make it. So I do get lost, which means that I'm going to go to... Um, 
I'm going to rule that I have to take another event here. So that kind of does negate a little bit the, the what I got from um, getting a lift off Claudius. Two clubs. So events in flight. You meet a jackdaw offers to company you and help you at your next location. In the current hex, the next exit views it make all checks with authority. Okay, that's cool. So we meet a jackdaw called... Um, I'm going to call this... Um, what are we going to call this? Um, Jacqueline Dawson. That is the name of this jackdaw. Um, I'm really waiting to meet a, a, a young goose and call it Ryan Gosling. I'm going to. So we're going to do Jacqueline Dawson. So Jacqueline, we're going to move across to the bank now. So if I take any checks here or on the next one, I am going to get advantage and well authority, which is the same as ad concepts as advantage in D and D. All right. Let's take another event in flight. Seven of diamonds. A hostile gull is protecting their territory. Enter combat or make an evade check to avoid them. Um, I don't like fighting, so I'm going to try and make an evade check to avoid them. If you choose to evade, you must travel to an MX hex immediately to the left or right. Right, okay. Well, I'm going to choose evade. And we're going to fly over the bank. So aces are low, so that's cool. So I will definitely make that one. Nine of spades. That's great. So we do evade. And actually, I could have made that with authority anyway, but that doesn't matter. So, But I am going to move to the left, um, which means I have to take another check. And this is where Jacqueline Daw is going to um, is going to leave me after this one. Um, yeah, Jokers have said... Jokers, the Joker rule is not... I've got another... I've literally just drawn another Joker. The Joker rule is a, a nice one. Obviously, it's a limited resource. If you are playing in pro crow mode, when you deplete the deck, you have to put those back in. So there are some rules to make this game a little bit more challenging. However, in 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 normal play, you can keep your jokers when you've depleted the deck, or you can play that you put one back if you've got two. It's again, it's entirely up to you how difficult you make the game for yourself. The main thing is that you're telling a good story, which I hope I'm doing here. So, um, let's take that two of hearts. Um, another bird joins you in flight. They're carrying an object. I could persuade them to give it to me. Shall we see what object they're carrying? I'm going to say that this bird is a... I'm going to say that it's um, a pelican. So it's a pelican with two robotic wings. And it's got... Actually, because because they're pink, it's got... No, it's, it's flamingos, isn't it? I'm going to say flamingo. Because they're pink... This flamingo has got neon. Its wings have like um, across where the sort of the structure of the wing is. It has um, like a neon pulsating strip, pretty much like the one that goes around my uh, across the top of the screen. Um, so what has it got, though? What has it got to offer? Because I do have two objects. So King of Spades, create an object of your own or draw again. So let's draw again. Uh, in when I play on on stream, I just draw again, so you don't have to watch me sit around trying to think of something. A nuclear powered microchip. Okay, so I know where it's got this from. It it's picked this up, so I'm going to delete this from our um, map. Um, let's have a look. I don't know how you delete it, but I am going to delete it. I guess you can just move it off screen. That was where it was. I'm just going to move it off screen. There we go. Excellent. So I'm going to get rid of the nuclear powered microchip because I'm going to say that this thing has found it. So what the nuclear powered microchip does is... Um, whilst I'm using this chip, I can travel two hexes before I need to take a turn on land. Uh, I don't want this, and I'm going to tell it, you know, it shouldn't, this this pelican, I'm going to say in no uncertain terms, it should not be messing with this guy. I don't want to know where it got this stuff from. I don't want to speak to it again. I'm not interested in um, this kind of stuff unless it's um, sanctioned by my crew. So currently, unless my crew says so, I have a no nuclear policy. All right, let's move across the, the roof of the bank. So we are heading towards M3 G Corp. <laughs> Two of spades. So this is our next turn in flight, which yields um, a metaverse hack. Uh, oh, sorry. No, that's I'm not in events. Right, okay. 
Right, in events. You meet a jackdaw. Oh, yeah, so we've had um, two of spades before. You meet a jackdaw. So the same jackdaw, Jacqueline Daw, um, flies back around again and offers to accompany me to my next location. Okay, so that's nice and easy. We can move on. So we'll say Jacqueline Daw has come back and given us a a little bit of um, a hand. They, f they, f they felt bad for leaving us. Um, so they're going to help us in this one. So we just get authority on checks. So you become lost. Make a navigate check. If you fail, you must remain in your current loca location. All right. So let me... Um, yeah, because this area of the city is all built up. There's there's a lot of stuff going on here, uh, with it being the financial district. So I'm going to do... Um, I've got to beat a nine. So my navigate is two. So I need to get a seven or more, but I get two draws. So the first one I fail... The second one, I succeed. All right, that's cool. So I could have played a joker, but I am hanging on to them because I had authority on that check. All right, so we can uh, move again, head towards M3G Corp. Now we have to decide whether we're going to land or whether we are going to fly to the top of the building. Um, I guess there's a good transmitter on the top, so we'll probably take the top. It's going to be windy up there. It's going to be quite a rough environment for us to set up in, but I'm sure there's some kind of air vent or grill or duct that we can start setting all our things up. Um, I've got a wireless transmitter. I can get rid of it in a moment. So we'll fly to the top. But let's take another event in flight while I fly to the top of the building. <laughs> you see crows performing a funeral in a location. Well, I'm going to say that they are, they're on quite kind of like a shelf. Um, again, unfortunately, one of our... Um, one of our number hasn't made it. They got into a fight on the way here. They did manage to get to the building, but have since um, unfortunately passed on. Um, I can join and help this healing ritual, and I can also it, it will also act as a healing ritual for me. So I can do a dance or a sing check. So I'm going to do a sing check. So the target is five, and I get a seven. So that's cool. I actually do get two for sing as well. So that's nine. So I'm going to heal myself for one. Uh, which is cool. So I've got no injuries at the moment. So I'm I'm actually doing a lot better than I did on the Gothic Crow. I did get I did get quite a lot of injuries on the Gothic Crow. Just on that note, um, my daughter Isabel, who joined me for the last three sessions, I think of that, she'll probably do the same on this game. Um, we'll probably bring her in as a... Uh, a fully created, um, she'll create her own character and then it gives you an idea of as well how you can play this with two players. Right, okay. Let's move onwards then. So we're going to fly up to the top of the building. Um, can you, s let me just make sure you can see where I am. I'm going to pull it across a little bit. There we go. So we're going to fly to the top of M3 Corp. Um, one, I would say we've still got to fly up because it's quite, it's quite high up. So let's take another event in flight. Um, what else did they, sorry, what else did I get from helping them? Oh, they said they will gift me with an object. So I should probably see what object they were going to gift me with for helping. Um, I don't know whether I'm too bothered. King of hearts, uh, create an object of your own or draw again. Six of spades. Three differently coloured wires. Okay, all right. Well, you can fix. Mm, I I don't. I, unfortunately, I don't really want to take any objects at the moment because it means dropping something I've got. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna carry on. I feel like I've I've passed on a couple of pretty good objects here. Although one of them was on. It was a principal thing. The nuclear, the nuclear powered thing. All right. Let's get onto the top of this building then and land. So we're going to get on the top of the building and land. We need to take two turns. So the first turn that I am going to take is we are going to do a... I'm going to try and install this wireless transmitter. I'm going to use one of my jokers to do that because I do not want to fail at doing this. So that's my first event is installing this wireless transmitter. And what that also means is that I can now tick off an objective. So we have actually managed to get one objective done so far. Um, 
Hey, Day 20 Live, thanks for joining. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of fun. Normally, I would be journaling this, but um, it's it's obviously because I'm I'm recording it. I don't need to do that because I can just go back and watch the videos. Uh, right, so let's go. I would also say this is actually quite a, a fun way to play the game because I have seen a few YouTubers do it. And even if you're not, even if you don't intend to publish it anywhere, it's probably a fun way to to have a go at this game. Just just record yourself doing it. Um, draw a comic right on the back of a napkin. Um, flashcards. Any any way you want to um, record your journey. So we got to take one more turn. What I am going to do though first is I am going to. Um, we need another. We actually need another thing here. So we actually need to put in here our objectives. Because we have now done, we have now completed one of, so now we're, now we're at fledgling, now we're at juvenile stage, we have to do four objectives before we can move on, so we've done one of four. Um, we've currently got, um, we've currently got, my crew want a wireless transmitter with me. Okay, we've done that one. We've just installed the wireless transmitter. We, we we brought the wireless transmitter all the way from the SkyTrain terminus um, out to the M3G Corp. What I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to ha have to head inside the building. So I'm going to fly down two levels um, <clears throat> to the lower floor. I'm going to fly down two hexes to the lower floor. I'm going to try getting through a window without anybody seeing me. And then I'm going to, well, actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait on the window ledge until someone goes in through the door to the cybernetics division and I'm going to memorize the passcode. I don't have any problem memorizing the passcode because I have got um, a, a data chip in my head that does have um, SSD storage, let's say, or the equivalent in this world. Right, okay, so the first thing I need to do, I need to now, I need to take, I think I need to take one more, yeah, because I'm landed, so I need to take one more event on land so we shall see what that is ten of diamonds the weather takes a turn for the worse if you're indoors ignore this prompt and draw another otherwise make otherwise make a search check for a place to take shelter um yeah so yeah um this we're very high up here so i'm going to say a lot of storm cl clouds roll across very quickly here um we get a really really heavy wind so i'm going to have to find somewhere that i can i'm going to try and find an air duct um, so I'm going to make a search check to find an air duct that's unoccupied. So the target is three, um, six. So I do find, um, so I wait out the storm um, and I have to take two more turns here. A wee bit annoying, but here we go. So three of spades. Um, a gravely injured fledgling tells me about a mission they're undertaking. Oh, this is cool. So another fledgling um, manages to land. So there's... What's what's happening at this moment in time is um, we have we're relocating all our, all our equipment. We've relocated from the south of the city to actually inside the city now because we're trying to we're trying to become the leading crew in data smuggling. Um, we have managed to, <coughs> without the knowledge of the company, we have managed to install ourselves on the roof of a company called M Three G Corp. But there are still some of our number arriving. Not everybody's made it. You know, some of them may have been caught up in combat. Um, that it's a dangerous flight across the city. I've made it, and a fledgling has just landed. Who is worse for, worse for wear on their last on their last legs? So this fledgling has um, approached me, and sort of with their dying um, dying words, or I guess they can transmit this information to me wirelessly. They tell me about a mission they were undertaking. I'm going to make a preen check and try and save them because it does say I can do that here. Um, do you know what? I'm going to use my joker. So I'm going to be completely selfless and use my joker. Um, there's two reasons I'm going to do that. A, because I am selfless in this game. I, you know, I, I don't want another bird. I've already seen two of my um, co-workers fall. I don't want any more to fall. Secondly... Meta gaming, I know I'm close to the end of the deck, so I know that <laughs> I will get to shuffle um, after I've drawn about another nine or ten cards, um, which means that I can 
I get a chance of getting the Jokers again. Okay, so um, I'm going to play the Joker. I do manage to save them. They're in a bad way, though, so they're going to have to recuperate here. It's going to take them several days to um, get themselves back to where they were. They are a fledgling as well, so um, they're still in training. I can now draw an objective, though, because there is a mission here for me to be had. I can take their mission, which is kind of the rule. You save them or you find their bodies, you get their missions. That's the rule I'm making for my crew. So, eight of spades. Um, so, there, the objective was... Um, someone who was once an ally has gone rogue and stolen something from us. Ah, okay. So this works because one of the one of our own crows, who was once an ally, has gone rogue and stolen something, and they they were last seen taking it towards location. So we've got an objective to try and go find that. So let's let's firstly find out <coughs> where this crow has gone. Uh, sorry, what this crow has stolen, and then we'll find out where they've gone. All right, so let's draw another card. So eight of diamonds. So let's go to, firstly, what have they stolen from us? They have actually stolen from us um, a software patch that we use to heal injuries. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we need this. We use it to heal injuries in our neuro implants. Uh, they have taken the original file. So it's not so much as they have stolen it from us because we do have a copy of it they've actually stolen it as in they've stolen a copy of it we don't want this is a software patch it's our proprietary um data and software so i think we are gonna have to um yeah we got to go get this so let's let's see where they were um in which case we need to draw a location so let's draw the location so it's a three of diamonds so the location that we would find them in is the th a disused railway tunnel. So they were last seen <coughs> heading for a disused railway tunnel. Tunnel. So let's um, let's write this down. Uh, thank you, I am T. Um, thank you, High and Lonesome. Sorry, uh, sorry, who's leaving? Sorry, I am a T Rex is leaving. Thank you very much um, for watching. Um, you will be in the draw for a copy of Be Like a Crow. All right. So um, let's. Let's do this. Let's add this to our objectives. But I've still got to get down there as well and get to the um, to the ground floor, see if I can spot this this passcode. So the objective. Um, one of our crow, uh, one of our crow, crow leagues. Like a colleague? Oh, I know. One of our colleagues has gone rogue during our re relocation. Anybody that wasn't here now has just missed that amazing pun. Um, so one of our colleagues has gone rogue during our relocation. They have stolen a software patch and are heading for a disused railway tunnel. All right, so one of our colleagues has gone rogue during our relocation. Um, so the relocation, it hasn't, you know, it hasn't gone without its mishaps. We've managed to, because someone found our headquarters, we've managed to locate we we always intended to move into the city. Someone found our headquarters outside the city, and we kind of used that for. Uh, we we use this. We we found something good in the bad. We decided now was the time to move. So we have actually moved on top of a M three G corps. Um. M three G corps headquarters. They don't know we're there, and we are hijacking their um, servers and data and, and all sorts of things. Um, but unfortunately we've lost three of our crew 
during the relocation due to combat situations and, and other things. Um, but we've also lost another one of our crew because they have taken this opportunity to steal something from us and, um, yeah, fly off somewhere. So I think there's going to be another crew in this disused railway tunnel. So we'll decide where that disused rail tunnel is in a moment. I think it's going to be north in the wastes because the waste is like the old world. You know, it's the world that kind of we know, whereas the, the city is uh, very high tech, um, futuristic city. I think Blade Runner or Cyberpunk. So, um, right, okay. But first thing, before we do that objective, we do have to get down to the bottom floor. So I'm going to take, I'm going to move down one as we fly to the uh, to a ledge on the bottom floor. So here we go. Let's draw another event. <coughs> Excuse me. For um, So we need to go back to events. So we got, uh, this is an event in flight. Um, this event is four of spades. A tailwind gives you haste. Advance immediately to any adjacent hex. So I literally dive off the top of the building and I just drop. Um, I've got quite adept at flying now because I'm now a fledgling. I'm, I'm light. Um, I'm not a massive bird. I have had a bit of practice. I've also, on the way here, I got buffeted about a lot by wind and I started learning how to use... Um, the wind and the air currents to my advantage. So this a, a sort of downdraft pushes me down. So I'm going to get into the next hex. Um, so I have to take an event here or I can take a turn. So the turn I'm going to take is I'm going to land on the ledge. I'm going to walk around the ledge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, search for the cybernetics division through the window, see if I can see that. Um, so let's have a look. Queen and a four, that's a failure. Okay, so I'm going to take, now I'm going to take another event here before I can search again. So we're going to take an event on land. I know I'm in a windowsill and I'm technically not on land, but anything you do when you're not flying. So King of Diamonds, create your, create your own event. Well, we said for this stream, I'm not creating my own events. Ace of Clubs, create your own event. There is actually only three of those. Right, Ten of Spades. Um, you meet a character who is hostile. You have time to make an evade check, see if you can hide somewhere. This makes sense. Um, so let's see who the character is first. Let's see who the character is and see if it, it fits in well with our story or how, how we get this character to fit in with our story. Um, so the character is um, an internet celebrity. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so we have got a... Um, we have got a let's whatever the equivalent of YouTube is in this in this world. Um, OK, I'll, t I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I did see someone's channel called this the, the other day. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to say that in this world, the owner of Megatech M3G Corp is called Hugh and he has a social media um, channel called Wait For It. YouTube. Um, so his social media channel is YouTube, named after himself. He's a very vain, narcissistic man that owns this company. Um, so YouTube, um, this internet celebrity has he he's reached, let's say he's reached half a billion followers in this massively overpopulated world, and he is being um, he's been shown around the company. Um, he, does he spot us? Does he spot us? Well, <coughs> a jack. So we need to do an evade check. So, all right, we got to the point where I need to shuffle the deck. So, um, consider this just, um, a break, a tense moment. <laughs> so we have to draw with our evade check higher than a jack. We'll, we'll do that in a moment. Um, so yeah. If you like the game, I have done a second printing of it now. You can also get the PDF. Um, and I'm also releasing a Crothulu um, version of it, which I'll probably publish next week. And what else? Um, yeah, and then I'm working I'm working on some other games. So uh, like I said uh, at the start of the stream, if you did miss it, I'm working on um, a game called Death Valley that I'm going to put on Indiegogo. Um, I did explain...
Um, well, that so that's not a character sheet. So I let I don't know whether this works in this one. Let me just see if this works here. Um, there you go. Okay, so so um, Vic, Vixie-ish, What I'm actually doing is I I have some software called Notion, which I use for any streams where I have to write anything, and then the top the top screen on the right above um above where I'm typing is um some software called Albert Rodeo. So it's a bit like Roll20. It's kind of a, a lighter version of Roll20. Um you can put maps on it, um put tokens on it and things. Um so yeah. But yeah I'm I yeah I'm I'm releasing um Crothulu next week. I'm working on um death valley and the the most the, the the brilliant thing is which will it will this will actually share some of the resolution mechanics with death valley is i am working on the multiplayer version of be like a crow which is going to be kickstarted sometime around christmas and hopefully launched in the first half of the year but that's going to be that's going to have a starter set uh, like a box set it's going to have um a flight manual for um Basically, the, analogous to the player's handbook, it's going to have um, a Raven Master's Guide, and it's also going to have a book of book with a few adventures in it. And we're going to do a few minis, and we're going to do dice with crows on, etc., etc. So we're going to do some lovely stretch goals. So that should be a lot of fun. But yeah, the the multiplayer is in. So so what I'm kind of doing, I am creating my own me mechanic. It's going to be a D6 mechanic, and it's gonna work for death it'll work for death valley apart from death valley does have its own slight difference so the the the, the d6 mechanic will be the core um but like death valley has a concept called grit so death valley doesn't have constitution as in you don't have a fixed constitution store you have grit which is kind of like luck points in cthulhu etc so you can use your grit um to to keep going in the face of adversity um, Death Valley is also a cool concept because you are going to be playing the undead, um, trying to um, stop the living um, expanding across your lands. So I'm really excited about that one. It's such a cool concept, and it uses tarot cards. It, it it's almost GMless. I haven't quite got it GMless at the moment, but the, the players define the scenes. They agree on scenes they want to play, and then a tarot card gives you a prompt of something that you have to incorporate into that scene. Uh, Death Valley's multiplayer. I'm aiming for it to be around four or six players. Um, and yeah, you just you basically s sit around and um, tell a story together. But there there are prompts, so there are there is the equivalent of kind of like inspiration. Um, you get to s choose your own scenes that you want to play out. So there are adventures that that give you. I'm gonna the starter set will come with an adventure. <laughs> Um, there, um, yeah, play te you may well be involved in one of the play tests. The play test for that will be probably, um, well, public play test, should I say. Play test that I'm going to put out there will probably be next month. Um, we have tested some of the mechanics. So we haven't actually tested a full game, but we've tested the resolution mechanics. Um, we've got, still got some more testing to do. Um, one of the things that, uh, Death Valley doesn't have it doesn't have the concept of leveling up it's more about the objects you find because you're just the undead you just you you'd pretty like Cthulhu you stick at the same level you might become better at a few things but generally it's it's going to be all based around the things that you find so you know the objects you pick up and etc they can become more powerful as the game goes on okay ah my throat is going to talking for so long okay right so where were we we were at a moment where we had to beat a jack with an evade check because um, um a famous youtuber um is going to be on to us we got a queen okay don't need to use anything okay so we managed to just duck um on the windowsill and this um youtuber um he 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 wanders on by. Obviously, he doesn't get shown inside the separate cybernetics division because it is very top secret, but he gets shown where it is. Um, right, I'm going to stand now, and I'm going to watch 
and wait for someone to come by the door and see if I can spot. So I'm going to see which... Um, I'm going to see what I'm going to use. I guess I'm going to try use my search check because that's going to be kind of going with my observation as well. So look, we'll use the search check to see. So I, I wait for about an hour or so and someone finally does come up to the door of the cybernetics division. And I'm going to see if I can spot. So I have to get four or more to spot the code. I, I easily spot the code. And what I'm going to do now, actually, I'm going to do something. Um, let me just see. The, a ridiculous question to say, have I got any dice? But I don't actually have any dice here. Apart from, well, apart from this, which is a good time to say, this big chunky thing, which I'm giving away on next week's um, Not of This Earth stream, which is next Thursday. I'm giving this away. Um, so please do. I'm going to... I'm going to roll this twice and get the numbers, the, the the passcode, but I want to show you something with this dice as well, which is pretty amazing. It's got a froggy moth in it, and it does this when you roll it. So it it's no ordinary dice. Um, I'm giving it away anyway on next Thursday stream, so just join next Thursday stream. Um, I'm not telling you where I got this. It's a secret where I get this. I get all kinds of dice, and... Um, um, I have friends. I have dice friends. <laughs> um, anyway, that has been on. That has never been used, but it's been on my mantelpiece a long time. So it's. Um, I decided that I wanted to give it to someone that might use it and have some fun with it. So let's do a. Let's do a roll. I'm going to roll it lightly. Then it doesn't waste the battery down. So we'll go with O five. O three. Okay. So O five O three. So anyway, I'm giving away that away on, on sorry, next Tuesday's Not of This Earth stream. That's a great stream. I'll, I'll tell you about that at the end of this one, though. Okay. So, 0503, that's the code. I need to take that code to um, someone, don't I? That was my... I have to take it... Right, well, I'm going to... Right, so I'm going to write the code down. <clears throat> I've got the passcode, but I don't feel like I should be allowed to um, get this get this objective cleared until I've made my way across to the bionic factory. So let's um, let's fly off, and then we're gonna find we're gonna go into the waste then after we've done in the city. So let's fly back over the bank. We'll probably go over the car park. So let's take an event, um, an event in flight. Seven of clubs. Uh huh. Seven of clubs. A conspiracy of ravens are, are performing an airborne healing ritual. So they're, I, I, I would say they're still performing rituals for for the fallen here. I'm not going to get involved in this. I haven't got any injuries. There's no need for me to get involved because I can heal myself at the same time. I am just going to keep going. I'm going to fly across the car park. I'm going to head across. At this point now, I'm feeling a little bit more um like part of the crew. I'm a fledgling, but I've done quite a few objectives. Um, I'm feeling confident, so I'm going to start also flying around and and surveying the area, surveying the landscape. Um, Jack of Spades. Jack of Spades, you fly into a low cloud or mist, make a navigation check. Well, this is what happens when you get cocky. Um, I'm still a fledgling, um, so I need to make a... Let's see, I need to make a navigation check. So the target for my navigation check is two. So I don't think I can actually fail because uh, my navigator is two. So I will draw a card, but I can't fail. Wow, ace is low, so it's three. I only just succeeded. So I don't get lost. Um, so I can keep going. I don't have to take another turn. I'm going to fly over the government buildings because um, I'm interested in those. Um, see what's going on there. So another event in flight, five of clubs. Um... So as uh, on the edge of the government buildings, I spot a congregation of magpies in their nests. I'm gonna. Um, I can land. I I'm not a fan of magpies. Um, I know a crew of magpies, and I've got a feeling this crew of magpies are the ones that our crow has gone to join, our rogue crow. Um, so I'm gonna avoid them. I'm gonna fly above them. Um, I'm going to do a fly check to see if I get spotted by them. Not that it matters at this point, but it may matter in future in the story. 
So I got a seven target and I get a jack. So I do manage to fly over them without them seeing. So let's get straight over the government buildings. So we're over the government buildings. We're going to take another event in flight. Um, again, um, five of spades, yeah. So again, it's the magpies. Uh, this, this, so these government buildings are all just littered with magpies. I'm going to make another check to see if I can get past them. Yeah, I get past them. I don't have to do that, but in my mind, as the story works out, a lot of, if I don't know another bird, they could be a member of another crew, and I will make a note of it and maybe come back to it. Maybe, maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's something. All right, let's take, we can fly now. So we are really heading fast and furiously to the Bionics factory. Jack of clubs. Um... Oh, again, so you're flying to low cloud or miss and nothing navigation check. So I would say that makes sense. There's a lot of cloud about at the moment. So the target's three, and I get a four. I don't need to add anything on to that. That's fine. Um, I've just gotten lucky there with the same with the same sort of colour and number because generally you do get a lot, a lot of variation in the prompts. All right, so let's do another flight. So we're going to fly over the... Bionic factory, and then we're going to fly down to one level down because I did get instructions on where to go um, when I got the objective. Ten of spades. So a bird joins you in flight and presents you with a task. All right, so what bird are we going to say um, presents us with a task? Well, it's got to be one of my crew, hasn't it? So let's say that this one is a... Um, uh, let's say a raven. So quite um, an intimidating large bird. I'm going to say an adult raven. Um, <coughs> so it's going to generate a new objective. I'm going to generate a new objective, should I say. And that's what this raven is going to ask me to do. And you always have to do what your elders tell you. Um, so let's draw a new, draw a new objective. Oh, so he wants me... So he's actually giving me a job for the company. He wants me to go steal something from someone that's located in a high-security area. So I'm kind of, like, going to relay that I'm currently heading um, into this building now to to complete an objective. I've, I've stolen some secrets from Mega 3 G Corp, and I'm giving them to Wingtronic, who are the Bionic Factory. Um, this is part of a job our crew was given. It's my first ever actual job for the crew rather than just internal work for them um it's my first job for a client so i'm gonna go do this uh the, the raven says that's fine that's absolutely fine but i do need to do this one afterwards because you know gotta do what i'm told um so we need to so we need to we need to find out what the object is that i've been hired to steal so what's the object that I've been hired to steal? All right, let's find out. Um, tiny motorcycle boots with metal buckles. Okay, so I've been hired to find some tiny motorcycle boots with metal buckles. Um, so we've heard that a another crew has, has developed these that makes it easier for them to... Um, makes it easier for them to operate on land. Um, they also can be used as a weapon for stomp attacks. And the other side of it is they look badass. So, I mean, why am I not going to want to go and try steal these? I'm going to try steal these tiny motorcycle boots. So, where do they want me to steal them from? Two spades. Well, who is it? Who's got them? Tiny motorcycle boots from a character. So a tiny motorcycle boots from um, a character. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, from a nightclub owner. Um, okay. So from a nightclub owner. Yep, okay. So we're going to head back to the nightclub. Ooh, that's going to be risky. There are some tiny motorcycle boots there. And then what was the last bit? Um... Oh, no, sorry, that's the location, the character. Yeah, nightclub owner in Where Are They? So they don't have to be in the nightclub. Okay, perfect. Six of Hearts in a cybernetics factory. 
Oh, okay, this works. I did say I wanted to become a double agent. I'm going to become a double agent. Okay, so. In this bionics factory, here, this crow, um, wants me to, he's been, he's been staking this play out, this raven wants me to go in there, and whilst I am giving them this, giving them the secret that I've stolen from them, he then wants me to try and steal a pair of these tiny bird boots that they have been developing, um, which help you hop, which have little mini weapons inside them. So let's, so this is, I, this is so duplicitous, but I'm going to have to do it because it's for my crew. So steal tiny boot from um, Wingtronic. I don't know whether this makes, but a former nightclub owner has them in their possession. I'm going to have to work out why that former nightclub owner would be here. But um, let's go, and I I think before we close, because we're nearly at the end of the stream, I think before we close the stream off, what we're going to do is we're going to close off our second objective. So we will go and give this code. And then once we are in the building, we're going to start next. Um, so we're going to start start of next session. We're going to try do this one at the start of the next session. Um, so look, we can give this passcode. So we take one more event. We have to fly down. So let's fly down into the bionic factory. So we can now take one event in flight. And I'm going to take one event on land. We're going to give the passcode over. And then we're going to close the session off. Okay. So let's take a look at our event on land, which is a two of hearts. Um, where are my events? So events on uh, flight, sorry. Event on, events in flight. Another bird joins you in flight. They're carrying objects. You can swear them to give you it. All right. Well, let's see what the object is. Um, it, let's just say it's the crow that joins me, the, the, the raven that joins me. And he's gonna give he's gonna offer me an object. Well, they've got an object. I need to decide whether I'm gonna try and get it off them. So the object is a poison dart fountain. Oh no, that's that's sorry, that's the wrong one. That's clockwork rope. I thought that didn't make any sense. Nine of diamonds. What object can we get from them? Nine of diamonds. A vial of plutonium. At any level above fledgling, you can add this to your wings fuel source to briefly increase your flying power. Oh, so I see that this, let's have a look how many things I've got, because I can only carry two things. Um, and I think I gave some stuff away, right? Oh, the wireless transmitter's gone. All right, I'm going to try and convince this thing. I'm going to ask it what these little vials are that it's got under its wings. So I see that it's got some kind of little um, part in its side, and it's got one of these vials stuck in it, and it's glowing. And it's got several of these in like almost a bandolia wrapped around it. I'm going to ask it if I can have one. So I'm going to do a befriend check. Oh, it's a jack. Uh, it's a 10. What do I get for befriend? Um, oh, I get four. Um, he kind of looks at me and, and sort of says, well, you won't be able to use it yet um, until you become a adult because then you can have your... Um, you can have your power power chip installed. But okay, that's fine. Let's go with that. We can... Um, um, this campaign, this is literally the second session because I've, I I leveled up from a fledgling. We only started it so started it last week. So I do sessions of about 90 minutes. So I think in depending on how long you want to take, you can usually do six sessions, seven sessions to complete a full setting. And and also depending on how fast you tell your story. So I've got a vial of plutonium. Uh, what does that do? Let's just see what that does again. Um it was Um a vial of plutonium. Any level above fledge then you can add 
travel three hexes and make your net. Okay. Vial of Plutonium. So this is one use. So I get three hexes of travel. So this really does nitro me. Plus two check. Is it two checks or three checks with authority? Wowzers. Okay. Authority. All right. So we are, yeah, let's have a look. Um, so we'll do that. That's fine. I've got that. I managed to friend him. I get onto the ledge. I'm going to take one event on land, and then we are going to give that code over, complete an objective, mark that off, and finish the session. So, and then we're going to do a draw for the for the winner. So events on land. Um, four of hearts. Oh, right, okay. I land on a, in a difficult spot. I actually land in a tangle of wires that are coming out of... Um, a duct. So I need to make a successful I need to make a successful hop check. So the target's three and I can make a king, that's fine. So I don't get um I don't actually get injured. That's great. So what I'm gonna do from here is I am going to um I'm gonna hop in. Um I'm gonna give the passcode to someone in this building. Um, which wouldn't be hard to do because I guess they're going to recognize me from my markings that I work for the crew. I haven't given my crew a name, actually. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to throw an idea for a crew name for our bird in the chat while I do a roll, while I do something here. Um, we will close this game off, though, today. Oh, I need to just get my objectives updated as well. No, I don't want to get injured while carrying plutonium. That That is a good idea. I did say that I had a bit of a policy as well not to work with plutonium, but now I've seen it in action. Um, that's all gone out of the window. All right, so let's just do a little review. So we've got no injuries, which is really cool. I have stayed away from combat. We've done the corporation. Yep, that's cannon. I don't think we can. Yeah, that's not going to fit on there. That's a shame. Right, I work for the corporation. All right. In fact, I'll I'll do this. Oops, let's do this slightly differently. Crew. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put current crew, because you never know. I mean, we've already had a crow go rogue. They must have a reason to do so. Someone's paying well. All right, Cyber Crow JX3, and we have done two. So, we, yeah, great session. Really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. I always enjoy doing these, and I hope you enjoy watching them. Um... And always, as always, do feel free to get involved. Um, now then, I've got a little bit of software here that hopefully will do something for me. Let's just take a look. If I can get this to work. So, um, how do I do this now? Um, oh, we sorry, we have got, sorry, we have got a winner. That's fine, that's fine. Um, so, let me just show you the winner. And then I will have a two-minute chat with you before I go. I can't, let me just make sure that I can see this. Um, let's have a look. This was done by my amazing daughter. She has done the wheel. Um, Dirty 20 Live, you are the winner. Thank you for joining. Um... Best way to um, best way to get your free copy of Be Like a Crow is to contact um, Sarah. I think I actually know. I I think well, you won something today. I think I know. I think I've actually met you once, right? Um, I'm pretty sure we met at Dragon Meet. If that's the right person. Um, anyway, to send a message to that's right. So send a message to Sarah at. Um, criticalkit.co.uk or she'll she will try um she will try reach out to you 
But please do. If you send a message to her, you know, it just makes her her life a little bit easier. And she, we'll arrange to get that out to you. I'm going to throw in a um, a little badge for you. Uh, yeah, we'll throw you in a badge and uh, maybe some stickers as well. We got a few stickers, so that's good. Uh, I'll probably do that every week. I'll probably give something away every week. Um, it might be a deck of cards next week. It could be... I, I don't know. We've got plenty of crow stuff to go at. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching um, and getting involved. I'm sorry I can't give you all something tonight, but, um, you know, I do do other streams, and I always try to give something away on the streams. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, if you do want to support the channel, the, the easiest way to support the channel is just to go and, you know, buy a little something off criticalkit.co.uk, especially one of my games. Um, there are more of my games coming on there soon. Um, it's no problem if you're not in a position to support the channel financially. You know, it's a model of soundness. The the people that can are supporting it for people that can, and um, I'm I'm happy with that. Um, I'm just happy that you're all here to share this. Uh, what else? Yeah, join us for yeah. Please do join us for Thursday's stream. Uh, sorry, I get this wrong every time. Tuesday stream, it's Thursday today. Join us for Tuesday stream for Not of This Earth because I am giving away that D20. We create a world together. We actually built um, a very rough adventure last session based on the world we've created, but we're going to be jumping back into the world building. Everybody gets to throw something in the chat and we just make a ridiculous world. Um, so please join in on that. Um, other things, just to quickly say, I'll, I say these at the end of every, every stream. If you do want to come and meet me and have a chat about TTRPGs, or dice or whatever, just just gaming in general. Um, we are at. Um, let's just think where we're at. In a couple of weeks, you'll have to go find these things somewhere. But Wintercon, spelt with a Y instead of an I, we're at Wintercon in Eastbourne, so we're on the southeast coast. Um, after that, I think the week after that, we are at um, Manchester Tabletop Gaming Live. I'll be there with bringing all my goodies. Then we're going to Essen in Germany. Um, so if you're in the EU and you, you, you want to see us, you can go to Essen. Very nervous about that one. No idea yet what what we're going to take, how we're going to get there, where we're going to stay. Um, after that, I think we've got a few coming up, a few local ones in the southwest. And then we'll be ending the year at Dragon Meat um, in London, Hammersmith, um, Novotel, which is an amazing little one that not a lot of people know about. But um, yeah, it's it's really worth checking out and going to. It's a wonderful, wonderful um, event. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, Pastor. Yeah, it'd be lovely to meet you. Um, so that's it. I've probably talked all I can talk. Um, I want to th thank my um, daughter. She's not in the room now. My daughter, Isabel, who you may know from the stream. Sarah's out tonight doing her thing. She's doing a bit of rollerblading by the coast. Um, so my daughter has been... <laughs> managing she's been producer for me tonight she's done an excellent job for me so thank you to her and um yeah thank you everybody for watching um and please join us next tuesday or join us next thursday for this one thank you very much everyone goodbye